be alive. We do not take it lightly, nor take it for granted. Uh, we are enthused and energetic, excited, and expectant uh, about what this day is going to be. Uh, it's a critical collaboration between the uh, New Birth Missionary Baptist Church, uh, the Red Cross, the Fire Department, and so many stakeholders who are concerned about what is taking place uh, in our community. Already this year, 2022, there have been 25 deaths. Last year, there were 106. The Bible says that people die from a lack of knowledge. And so today, we're going to be canvassing the community, realizing uh, that so many people are at risk. A lot of the homes in this community are over 50 years old, and as a consequence, are living outside of compliance. The mission and the attempt of what it is that we want to do today uh, is to help embolden and strengthen the, the vulnerable in our community so that they might be prepared. From January to October of 2021, the Red Cross of Georgia saw the number of home fires surge by 23%, up to 2,378 house fires across the state, a jump from 1,947 during the same time frame last year. Climate change is the main cause of the increase with fires in Georgia. So we want to make sure today we stop another pandemic. The reality is more people die from smoke than they do from fire. But we know wherever there's smoke, there's fire. And so this is in fact a revolutionary act for us to move forward progressively uh, to make sure that every home not only has a smoke detector, but a smoke detector that works. I want to thank those who are walking alongside us as we walk alongside them, because John Maxwell said it best, teamwork makes the dream work. So today begins a new day for DeKalb County and a greater day for the future of its residents. Thank you. We're excited to move forward. in particular my good friend Dr. Jamal Bryant. Thank you so much for the third annual Goodwill donation drive. Because of the work that you've done in supporting Goodwill, we're helping to employ thousands of people all across North Georgia. Folks with disabilities, people coming out of the criminal justice system, and people who just need a little bit of help to get the job of their dreams. Thank you, New Birth, for being there for Goodwill year after year after year. Thank you for coming out donating to the cause. We appreciate it on behalf of our pastor, Jamal Bryant, and we just give you thanks for giving to the cause. What she said, like I said, thanks everyone yes. for your service. Thank you for giving back to those who are in need. Thank you. The song says, if when you give the best of your service, telling the world that the Savior has come, don't be dismayed when men don't believe. He'll understand and say, well done. I'm your pastor of Internet and Innovation, Kerr Vance Ross, and you all have been giving the best of your service. We're partners with Goodwill, and we are grateful for everything you allow us to do to help Goodwill and help our community. I'm letting you know that I simply want to tell you thank you for every piece of clothing, every pair of shoes, or whatever you gave. Let me tell you, well done. We thank you. New Birth appreciates you. It's not just a church. It's not just a lifestyle, it's a ministry. Thank you, thank you, and thank you again. It's Goodwill, it's New Birth, it's you. We appreciate you. New Birth, thank you for coming out and donating your clothes and shoes to the Goodwill Clothing Drive. It's absolutely awesome. Wanted to thank you guys for three great years of donating clothes to our partner with Goodwill, and we look forward to many more years to come. This is year number three. We are going out with a bang today, but we are anticipating even greater for next year. So we'll see you next year with your clothes and your gently worn shoes and donations for the Goodwill. So once again, thank you for cleaning out your closets. Thank you for coming to volunteer. Thank you for having the heart of God and sharing with our community. We love you. We appreciate you so much. 
Good day, New Birth. Let's tune in for today's video announcements. Dr. Bryant has carefully crafted a reading list to enlighten and empower us all. This month is no exception. Post-Corona, From Crisis to Opportunity by Scott Galloway is a timely and exceptional read. Also, just in time for Mother's Day, Dr. Bryant's sister, Dr. Tama Bryant Davis, has penned Homecoming, Overcome Fear and Trauma to Reclaim Your Whole Authentic authentic self. Both books are now available in our Call to Conquer bookstore, along with other great gifts for mom. Also, join us on Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. for group therapy in our sanctuary with special guest, Dr. Tama Bryant Davis. Dr. Davis will be signing her life-altering new book after service. Get your copy today. New birth on Sunday, May 22nd. We will celebrate two momentous occasions. Join us as we celebrate New Birth's 38th church anniversary. Also, we will be celebrating our great pastor's birthday with three amazing days of fun and festivities. Tell everyone you know, as this spectacular celebration will be like no other. During May, we will focus on unusual opportunities as we meditate on Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. As we are called to God's purpose, we know that unusual opportunities will line our paths. Congratulations to our employment ministry, our ministry of the month. They are serving diligently to prepare for our upcoming virtual career and resource fair. Embracing the era of the remote work revolution on Thursday, May 12th from 10 to 1 p.m. Please visit wearenewbirth.org forward slash events for more information. Our new birth counseling ministry Ministry presents Engaging the Mindset of Wellness tomorrow at 7 p.m. In this informative six-week Zoom class, trained NAMI facilitators will seek to change attitudes, assumptions, and ideas around mental health and mental health conditions. For more details, please visit wearenewbirth.org forward slash events. Please join us for worship on Sunday, May 8th at 9.30 a.m. as we celebrate Mother's Day with a anointed guest vocalist Lisa Page Brooks and Tasha Page Lockhart. Please share this special service with your entire family. We honor all of the mothers in our lives for their love, sacrifice, and encouragement. Hey ladies, it's Pastor Carrie here and I'm so excited to invite you to Circle with the Sisters live and in person right here in our sanctuary on May 9th at 7.30 p.m. As a matter of fact, I want you to come a little bit earlier because we're going to be going into court prayer with each other that night as well. Listen, we have none other than Pastor Christabel Clack. Yes, she is going to be here with us, leading us in praise and worship for the night. And I'm so glad that you'll be here. Listen, I want you to grab your friend, your girlfriend, your aunt, your cousin, your mama, whoever your, the woman is in your life that you love and your support and you are connected to. I want you to have her with you and meet me here for Circle with the Sisters Live. Listen, we're going to have a time like none other, but you got to register. We want to make sure that we take care of you and serve you well when you come. You can do that by using the prompts below. Listen, I love you, and I will see you on May 9th. Please join us for our baby dedication during our Sunday, May 15th worship service. We will dedicate our children and babies back to the Lord. Also, parents will make a commitment to raise them according to God's word and God's ways. Registration is required. Please visit wearenewbirth.org forward slash events. New Birth will be an early voting location for DeKalb County for the upcoming general primary on May 24th. Early voting begins tomorrow through May 20th. Please visit we are newbirth.org forward slash events for details. We invite everyone graduating from high school, technical school, college, undergrad, and grad school to graduation Sunday on May 29th at 930 a.m. We honor you for your achievements and wish you great success in your new endeavors. Please register at we are newbirth.org forward slash events to attend. Also, send us a photo of your elementary, middle school, and high school students. And that's that's going to wrap up today's video announcement. Good morning, Newburgh. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Yes, I am Reverend Travis Reeves from Turner Theological Seminary at the Interdenominational Theological Center. And on behalf of our senior pastor, 
Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant, we would like to welcome you to an experience like no other. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. And for our online viewers, we would like for you to do three things for us. We would like for you to like this video, share this video, and comment. And please do not forget to use our hashtag, New Birth Now. And for those of you who have joined us in person, we would like for you to share this experience when you leave here and invite somebody to come back next Sunday. And we want you to remember this one thing, there's no place like New Birth. Glory to your name, Father God. Lord, as we come before you in this moment, oh God, we pray that you forgive us of all of our sins, Lord God. Everything that we've done that's not like you, oh God. We thank you for the power of your blood. We thank you for the power of the cross, the opportunity to commune with you, oh God. So Lord God, we pray that you saturate this place with your presence. I pray, oh God, that you make preaching easy for Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant right now, oh God. We pray that you anoint him, oh God. Give us the words to say, oh God, that we may hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. And we thank you that on this day, every witch and every warlord is disappointed, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for the victory, oh God. We thank you that we will leave changed. We will leave empowered. We will leave, oh God, according to your precious will. And we give you glory and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Super, can you stand up on your feet all over the building? And can you clap your hands and give God the greatest praise that you can give him? Come on, let me see you do it. Let's give him praise this morning. Our scripture of the month. It's Romans 8, 28. I just want to remind you that even in this season, and we know. Somebody say, we know. Somebody say, we know. And what do we know? We know that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. If you know that everything is working out for you, can you clap your hands real big? Hallelujah. He's a great God. Yeah. 
service where we pass the peace and we are excited about it. Today I have two very special guests with me. These are two seminary students that are worshiping with us this morning. Can you give them a round of applause? How many of you know that in this house, we believe in the power of education and equipping our students to go to the next level? We're so excited about our upcoming EG Sunday, Scholarship Sunday, Graduation Sunday later this month. Hallelujah. Listen, if you have not ha given your child an opportunity to register for that scholarship, we've extended the date till next Monday. Somebody say next Monday. Hallelujah, make sure you get that, but there is even more than that happening this month. How many of us love our mamas, our biological, our spiritual moms, our godmothers? Where would we be without them? And so we are so excited to be celebrating Mother's Day next Sunday. Oh, come on in here. We have two special guests that are coming to worship with us, and we are so thrilled about it. And right after Mother's Day on Monday, where are all of my women in the house. Hallelujah. We have been having an amazing time in the Lord for the last couple of months. And so on Monday on the 9th, we're meeting at 7.30 p.m. to go into prayer. We're going to go into worship and we're going to fellowship together. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, at this time, we want you to like this. We want you to share this and we want you to fellowship with each other. What do you have to share with the people this morning? God bless you, New Birth family. I am Ryan Green. I serve as the student body president right on up the street. You probably passed it on the way here at Luther Rice College and Seminary. And past the peace is a very important time. God bless you. Thank you. Remember what Jesus said. He said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples by the love that you have and that you share to one another. God bless you. Thank Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. How can they share online? Morning, new birth. My name is Angelique Desiree Carney. I am a doctor of ministry student at the ITC Morehouse School of Religion. All praises be to God. Listen, I want you to be a disciple today. I want you to look at your neighbor. I want you to high five. I want you to dap. And I want you to tell them God loves you. And so do I. And those online viewers, I want you to write it in the comment section. God loves you. And so do I. And don't forget to use that hashtag new birth now. And remember, God loves you. And so do I. God bless you. Would you just look at somebody and tell them it's going to get better? Come on, tell somebody it's going to get better. I want you to type it right now. It's going to get better. We are so expectant in faith that things are going to get better. Because if Jesus could survive death, that means there's nothing that you cannot overcome. There is nothing that you cannot live past, and there is nothing you cannot live through. Is there anybody who survived some things uh, who, while you were in it, you thought you were not going to survive, but it was the power, the grace, and the love of God? God, every now and again, gives us tangible, irrefutable evidence of resurrection power. Uh, this week, we were able to bear witness after 20 years, after 20 years, Morris Brown College got its full accreditation back. Come on, somebody give God a hand clap of praise. Morris Brown College is uh, uh, the place that educated our first lady, Elder Vanessa Long. Come on, give God some praise. 
It is Morris Brown College that produce uh, our, one of our executive pastors, Pastor Carrie Turner. Give God some praise for her. New birth, I want you to get excited. I went to uh, the press conference for that announcement, and uh, we enrolled the very first student, new student, under Morris Brown's accreditation. Our own organist, uh, Elder Thomas Cody, is now enrolled to start in the fall. Uh, look at the person beside you. Tell them you can live through anything. You can live. Come on, look at somebody else. Tell them you can survive anything. Look back at him and say, if you don't believe it, look at me. I survived some stuff that should have killed some other people, but God's hand has been on my life. And while we were yet sinners, he died for us. Uh, here we are just a stone's throw away from Resurrection Sunday. Uh, and we are modeling the resurrection power of our loving Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, next, next, uh, uh, next uh, we ought to be excited to uh, know that we just passed on yesterday, and I need you all to get excited. Uh, in this pandemic, as of yesterday, we have given food to 900,000 people. Come on, come on, y'all can do better than that. 900,000 thousand people have now come through the king's table uh, yesterday we uh, opened up our campus for goodwill uh, for the third year in a row i'm claiming it by faith uh, we are the largest contributor to the goodwill of any church in the state of georgia i want to thank you for donating over twelve thousand pounds of clothes on yesterday somebody give god a shout of thanksgiving and appreciation because it is evidence of your excess and your overflow. Everything in the cup belongs to you. Everything in the saucer is a seed for you to be a blessing to somebody else. Uh, we partnered, uh, New Birth did, on yesterday uh, with the American Red Cross and with the Fire Department of DeKalb County, uh, and we went throughout this community uh, because deaths have been uh, ravishing uh, DeKalb County in the pandemic. Uh, but yesterday, we were able to install over 100 hundred smoke detectors in homes in this community just on yesterday. Come on, somebody get excited about it. And our task force, our disaster ministry is going to be going out 17 more times to make sure that there is not one door that is not knocked on in this county. I'm grateful that Jesus said uh, that, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you let me in, I'll come in and I'll sup with you. Our servant leaders, they are moving amongst you to uh, share with you, not uh, a repass, not uh, refreshment. Uh, they are sharing with you, not a snack for you to get through the service. Uh, they are sharing with you the sacred elements of a communion. We boast of the only faith in the world that can bear witness of a Savior who was born, who lived, who died, who rose again, and is coming back. Does anybody know his name? I said, does anybody know his name? At the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. I hope that every person has a receptacle in their possession. Jesus, before he was crucified, pulled all the disciples into the upper room. And when he pulled them together, he was saying to them something very critical that I need you to hear. This is not about membership. It is about discipleship. Jesus never gave us the charge to go get members. He said, go raise disciples. At the end of the day, seven days should not pass without you talking to somebody about Jesus. Seven days should not pass where you're not giving witness about how it is that he created a change and a miracle in your own life. I want you right where it is that you are, uh, to just bow your heads for one moment because we often talk about blessings. We often talk about harvest. We often talk about overflow. But very rarely do we talk about repentance. I want you to think about what it is that you've done by thought, by word, by deed in the month of April 
that did not model who God is in your life? What conversation did you have? What text message did you send? What activity did you participate in that did not give God ultimate glory? Repentance is not language. Repentance is a commitment to a change of behavior. So when I'm repenting, I am saying to God, I'm going to do better in May than I did in April. I'm going to live better in May than I did in April. I'm going to speak better in May than I did in April. I need everybody all over the room, would you just declare out loud, I repent. Every person online, I need you to type that in the thread right now. I repent. I recognize what I did wrong, and I'm committed to living a better life in the month of May. I want you to pull back the first level of your receptacle. I want you to pull that back. Ask that you would. Uh, please, sir. Please, ma'am. Lift up that wafer above your head. Jesus pulled out a loaf of bread to his disciples. Do you know what he said to them? He said, this is my body. It was broken for you. I want you to break that right in your hand. Break it right in your hand. Don't eat it. Just break it right in your hand. The enemy was hoping in April you would break down. Was hoping that you were going to fall apart. Was hoping you were going to crumble under the pressure. Was hoping that you would wave the white flag, was hoping, hear this, that you would commit suicide. Was hoping that you would give up on your faith and give up on your God. But here you are on the first Sunday in May, still holding on, still believing and still trusting for the body of Christ that was broken for sinners like you and me. Would you please take an eat? As that you'll pull back the second level of your receptacle. Jesus pulled out a flask of wine and he said to his disciples, this is my blood shed for you. He was preparing them because he said, please know, if you're anointed, you're going to have opposition. If you have an assignment, you will be attacked. When you try to make friends, you are going to produce enemies. But no matter how much stress you were under, this blood is going to keep you through it. How many of you know nothing can wipe away my sins but the blood of Jesus? For the blood that was shed for sinners like you and I, would you please take and drink? Renewing your covenant for another 30 days. I am believing by faith that May, you are going to be a better Christian than you were the first quarter of this year. If you believe it, would you clap your hands and give God glory? I need you to just point at two people around there and tell them, this month, let's do better. Come on, this month, let's do better. You may be seated. Come on. Come on, all the blood, all the blood of Jesus. Come on, wave your hand right where you are. Come on, oh, all the blood Come on, sing it out loud. that hand if you love our God. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. When Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for us, notice that he did not become an amputee. Making a sacrifice for us, he did not just give up a limb. He didn't sacrifice a pinky. 
or a toe, a kidney, a lung, a heart. He gave his whole sacrifice, all of him, for a wretched us. Can you imagine an exchange? He says, I'm going to give you all of me, and all I want in return is 10% from you, and you argue with that. Can you imagine being in a relationship where you are giving 100% and the person who you are involved with is mad that you asking them for 10? You wouldn't even stay in there, would you? Don't seem healthy. It doesn't seem logical. It doesn't seem how that this is uh, productive or purposeful. But that is the love of our God. In spite of how it is that we've fallen short, in spite of how it is that we've been negligent, he still gives us his best. And in return, all he's asking from us is a sacrifice of 10%. What an amazing privilege we have to extend our gratitude and thanks unto our God through the sharing of our tithes and offerings. Come on, some is only five of y'all clapping about it. I need you to think about how God took care of you this week, how God provided for you this week. I better say it another way. Aren't you glad you were able to breathe on your own this week? Aren't you, aren't you glad you didn't wake up brain dead this week? Aren't you glad that when you put the car in the ignition, it still went in the drive? Aren't you glad when you get home, the lights are still on and the air was still blowing? Our God has been good to us. Your testimony unwaveringly should be, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen his seed begging for bread. If you're in need of an offering envelope, I need you to lift up that hand. Those of you who are online, I want to challenge you on this, the first Sunday in May, that you're saying, I've got to give God my best. As a matter of fact, I am stretching myself that I want to do more in May for the body of Christ because I am expecting more from heaven in May than what heaven released to me in April. I believe that this is going to be an amazing month for you. I believe that with every fiber of my being. The, the music ministry has spurred something in me. Somebody just shout better. Yeah. Albert Einstein said the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. I need God to do something different. I'm expecting God to do something different. And all God is requiring of me is the same thing from 2,022 years ago, is that we would be obedient in our giving. As a consequence, our dear friends who are watching and viewing are with us from around the world, I want to challenge you to get your May in order. Get your house in order. You put God ahead of Visa. Put God ahead of your car note. Put God ahead of your hair appointment. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. Whether through give la text to give or push to pay, I need you to do it. I need you to do it in this moment. I need you to be compliant, not to what pastor asks, but what Malachi dictates for us to follow in the correspond to. Let me ask those of you, those of you, while it is that you're giving, our uh, ambassadors, our ushers who are moving amongst you, if they'll help uh, facilitate the needs of those who are uh, giving uh, tangibly, you're not giving through your phone, but uh, through those envelopes, ask that you would sow that now. Those of you who are blessed, and I want to underscore this, those of you who are blessed to be born in the month of May, would you stand, please? You are blessed. Look at these blessed people. God's hand is on their life. Amen. God, God does something special for people who are born. I'm feeling some hateration from people in October, in July. Uh, but those of you who were born in the month of May, like your pastor, God's got something special uh, in store for you. If there's somebody standing near you, stretch your right hand to faith towards him and tell them the rest of your life is going to be the best of your life. 
the rest of your life is going to be the best of your life. Now give God a shout of thanksgiving that God kept them alive. God kept them alive. Uh, la last night, my twin daughters turned 16. Y'all not praying for me. Y'all are not, Lord, y'all are not praying for me. I did a, a body search to every male that came to that party last night. I checked all of their phones, make sure that God was with them. Amen. Uh, God is going to do something amazing. Uh, can you all believe, can you believe that God has now kept new birth for 38 years? Uh, y'all don't seem excited about it. The visitors don't know any better. We're the members of this ministry. It ain't that many churches that can say God did all of this in such a short period of time. On May 22nd, May 22nd uh, will be uh, the anniversary of the church and, and my birthday, all wrapped in the one. Uh, we, we're going to have a major celebration. Uh, my best friend is going to be here, Bishop Rudolph McKissick Jr. from Jacksonville, Florida, uh, is going to be here uh, with us. It's going to be absolutely amazing. H how many of you believe God for signs and wonders? Signs and wonders. How many of you are crazy enough to still believe in miracles? Amen. We're going to have a supernatural encounter on uh, May 23rd and 24th. May 23rd and 24th, our prophet Dione Baez from Venezuela is going to be here uh, demonstrating the power of God uh, in healing, miracles, signs, and wonders. May 23rd and 24th. It'll be our very first time having an in-person encounter counter in over two years. And I'm believing that God is going to meet us in this place and that God is going to show himself strong. I'm excited about the hand of God. And I believe that May is for miracles. Uh, maybe I'm the only one. I, I want somebody to ride that train. Would somebody declare that out loud? May is for miracles. May, maybe you didn't realize that that's an affirmation over your own life. Somebody speak that thing with authority. May is for miracles. Because the people around you ain't cheering, they not shouting. Would you lay hands on yourself and declare out loud, May is for my miracle. A miracle is going to happen for me in the month of May. Can I really get on it? God, you got 31 days to produce a miracle in my life. Somebody shout out loud. May is for miracles. May is for miracles. And I'm believing that miracles are going to happen. Our music ministry is going to prepare us for a miracle of the word of God. Oh, I feel that thing right there. I dare you to just say it again. May is, come on, I can't hear nobody. I expect a miracle in my money. I expect a miracle in my body. I expect a miracle for my family. May is. I dare to just elbow your neighbor and say, watch God work in the next 31 days. He going to give you what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard. May is. I'm about to get in trouble. Oh, 
I've been waiting on a miracle. I need to know anybody been waiting on a miracle. You got 30 seconds to praise God in advance. For what he for me. I told Pastor yesterday, my family got a phone call and said, we got to take your dad in the surgery right now. Okay, my dad is 87, still a preacher, still traveling, doing ministry. They called the family and said, we got to take him right now. I want you to know, they gave him a surgery on Friday. I was in Baltimore yesterday. He's sitting at home on... i 
Everybody sing. Come on, would you lift up your voice? Would you give it to him? We give. your Bible apps and join me in the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. I want to invite you to, um, to be back here in the sanctuary on Tuesday for group therapy. Uh, my sister, Dr. Tamer Bryant Davis, who is uh, the newly elected president of the American Psychological Association, hashtag proud brother, uh, is going to be here on uh, Tuesday night to walk us through mental health uh, post-pandemic. We've dealt with a lot of stress, a lot of triggers, and a lot of trauma. Uh, she's gonna lay us all down on the couch uh, on uh, Tuesday, and so I wanna invite you to please come uh, Tuesday at 7.30. Just last week, she was on Good Morning America with Gail King. And this week, she'll be a new birth. It's a little bit different, uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, she's coming this way. After which, she'll do a book signing, and I want to invite all of you to come and be a part of it. Genesis chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. Genesis chapter 6. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you, 
two of every kind of bird, of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You may be seated. You're to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you, two of every kind of bird, of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you, and they are coming to you to be kept alive. I want to preach for a little while today using as a subject what one man won't do another one will. <laughs> I'm scared to make you turn to your neighbor, but I... <laughs> Would you look at your neighbor and say, the pastor said, what one man won't do, another one will. New Birth, um, this week a group of uh, doctoral students from the Payne Theological Seminary in Ohio came to shadow me this week to learn about our church, our church's history, our meteoric church growth, and how it has uh, become a model of cutting-edge ministry. They went on, on a tour of our 230-acre campus with 370,000 square feet having been developed. When they came back from that tour, I was bombarded with an avalanche of questions in relationship to the sheer genius and the forethought around one of the most critical ministries that history will have to record. I told them emphatically that it had nothing to do with me, but with the genius of the late Bishop Eddie Long. They asked me emphatically, what did I think was the secret to Bishop Long's success? And I told them that Bishop Long had a peculiar, unique capacity to tap into the cerebral vortex of the subconscious of the spiritual beings that are wrapped in the flesh to speak something that the church did not know how to pronounce in large measure. Bishop Long's secret was pushing the body of Christ to do what God mandated, which was to take authority. <laughs> Bishop Long speaking that message resonated with men all over the nation. As a consequence, from his time to this one, there has not been a church that has impacted as many men's life as new birth has. There is not a church that has spurred as many entrepreneurs as new birth has. There is not a church that has produced more homeowners than new birth has. There is not a church that produced more politicians than new birth has. There is not a church that influenced the culture as much as new birth has. There is not a church that has unpacked as many spiritual gifts as new birth has. I feel like I'm talking to visitors, people in this church know that it was under the sound of Bishop Long that you learned how to take authority over your own life. And because of that, you ought to give God glory even right now. Authority is the power 
to give orders. Authority is the power to make decisions. Authority is the capacity to enforce obedience. And the mantra of this ministry under our late apostle was to take authority, which means you have a responsibility to give orders, to make decisions, and to enforce obedience. As a consequence from the pulpit from which I stand, you were challenged to never take sides, but to take over. Because that is your God-given authority. Police have authority with a badge. Judges have authority with a robe. Bank managers have authority with a pen but believers have authority with their language. Your authority is to order it, to command it, and to direct it. A silent believer knows no authority, but you have been given the task to speak those things that are not as though they already are. You'll notice in our church, nobody going to tell you to be quiet. Nobody going to tell you it don't take all of that. Nobody going to tell you you screaming too loud. They understand here, this is where you exercise your authority. What I do here is going to reverberate to where I work. What I do here is going to echo down at the bank. What I do here is going to shift into the hospital where my relative is. What I do here is going to change the atmosphere of my children in my home. Why? Because I take authority. And I need you to be clear that taking authority did not start with Bishop Long. Taking authority begins in Genesis. As a matter of fact, in uh, the first chapter, the 26th verse, God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness so that you may rule over the fish of the sea, the birds in the air, and the livestock that are in the ground. He said to Adam, you have, here's the word, authority over everything that's in the air. You have authority over everything that's in the water and you have authority over everything that's in the ground. When you put that into perspective, that as the children of God, we have authority over the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and the beast on the ground, might I argue forthrightly that maybe, just maybe, that we have, in fact, compartmentalize the, what Daniel went through in the lion's den should not be classified as a miracle. What happened with Daniel in the lion's den is not a miracle. When they shut the mouth of that den, Daniel must have exercised authority. Because this is what he is supposed to do. When they shut him in that lion's den, do you know what Daniel must have declared over himself? He must have declared over himself what I need you to declare over yourself. Would you lay hands over yourself right now? Lay hands on yourself. Those of you who are viewing online, lay hands on yourself. Declare after me, I will not get hurt. I need you to declare with authority, I will not suffer injuries. I need you to lay hands on yourself and declare out loud, my life is not at risk. Now that was your practice, let's try that thing again. Lay hands on yourself, I will not get hurt. Not in a car accident, not from some Negro, not from a former fake friend, not from a family member. I will not get hurt. Lay hands on yourself. I will not suffer injuries. 
Nothing is wrong with my heart. Nothing is wrong with my reproductive organs. Nothing is wrong with my blood pressure. Y'all ain't saying nothing. There are no fibroids. There are no tumors. There are no cancer cells. Surgery will not be necessary. I will not be on medication the rest of my life. I will not require physical therapy. I, my life is not at risk. I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death and I will fear no evil. Why? Because God is with me. I'm not afraid of you firing me. I'm not afraid of you terminating me. I'm not afraid of you leaving me. I'm not afraid of you taking this house. I am not scared that you're going to take advantage of me. Why? His rod and his stare they comfort me you gotta understand God said in the month of May you are gonna walk around lions and you ain't gonna fear nothing because the power of God has given you authority first Peter first Peter 5 and 8 says be sober and be vigilant your adversary, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion, seeking somebody to devour. I need you to hear what the master likened the devil to. He likened the devil, hear this, to a lion. And you missed the key word, lion. As a child of God, I have authority over anything that's walking in the earth. Lions walk in the earth. And so I have authority over any principality that is in the earth. Don't you know the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty under God for the pulling down of strongholds. God said this month, police and operate your spiritual authority. Today you tell every devil that is a sign to you, you are under arrest. You don't know who you are messing with. I'm not one of these measly mouth Christians. I am a Christian that knows my authority. I bind every witch, every warlock, every demon, every rumor spreader, every gossiper, every hater. You don't even understand if God be for me, who can be a against me. I wonder if you'll walk in your authority today. Will you look at your neighbor and tell him a demon gotta die today? Whatever demon is in your house, whatever demon has attached to your child, whatever demon has attached to its marriage, he is going to die today. I didn't come to shout for no car. I didn't come for no money. I came to tell the devil, you have had four months to kill me, but because I'm still alive, I gotta walk in divine authority. I walk in the authority of God. You may be seated, please. I walk in the authority of God. I need you to be seated, please, please, please. I walk in the authority of God. I need you to just tap whoever's sitting next to you and tell them I got this. See, you gotta have one friend that don't mind fighting. You, you gotta have one friend that ain't gonna be cute or coy. They will take off their earrings. They will take off them heels. They'll put Vaseline on their face and say, I got you. I'm getting ready to handle it on your behalf. I dare somebody to just open up your mouth. God said, I gave you authority to defeat your friend's demons. Whatever they dealing with, you getting ready to pull the spirit of 
alcoholism out of them, the spirit of low self-esteem out of them, the spirit of promiscuity. Devil, you done mess with the wrong one. I cover all of my friends with my authority. Hallelujah. Be seated, please. I'm going to say it again. As I said it once, a demon going to die this month. Hallelujah. Softly, minstrels. Adam is deputized in Genesis chapter 1. He's deputized in Genesis chapter 1 to take authority over creeping things. Authority Adam is given over crawling things. Authority he has been deputized with is over flying things. That's in Genesis chapter 1. And then turn over two pages and get to Genesis chapter 3. His authority is put to the test when Eve is confronted by a snake. In Eve's defense, she was never given the instructions. Adam was. So the fall of man is not tied to Eve. It is tied to Adam's lack of taking authority over his house. God, y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. The worst thing you can do as a woman of God is to be connected to a man who don't know who he is. The Bible says submit, but it is with the caveat, only submit to a man who is submitted. If he don't know how to talk to stuff that's out of order, that ain't the man for you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He quick to talk you out of your drawers and out of your money, but it's slow to talk you out of your warfare. That is not the man for you. You gotta have a man that can talk with authority. Snake comes in the eve Watch this, and here's where we blame Adam. When Adam discovers that it's a snake, he should have been reminded that's his jurisdiction. I got authority over flying things, over swimming things, and over crawling things. God told me to tell just 500 of you that don't mind giving God worship. God said, I am giving you authority. Here's where you shout. You now have authority to destroy. Here it is. What destroyed family members? God, God, God I can't hear nobody. It got them, but it stops right here. God said, I need you to cry out loud because you getting ready to disrupt a generational curse. Your mama didn't know who she was. Your daddy was off the chain, but your son and your daughter will prophesy. Snakes ought to be stepped on. Snakes are supposed to be under your heel. Adam never set up an altar for false gods. Adam never burned an offering to a false god. He is thrown out of the garden, hear this, because he didn't use his authority. Because he didn't use his authority, he lost his authority. Some of you are on the edge of losing your authority. Hear this, because you don't let too much stuff slide. You, you don't let folk get away with stuff that you shouldn't have checked, that you should have checked the first time. But I want you walking in that office tomorrow saying, try me here. I was nice last week, but this week somebody is going to have to pay because I got 
authority. Got to have <laughs> authority over everything that thinks they fly. You got to have authority over all these creeps. You got to have authority over everything that's under the water. So new birth, by the time we get to our text in Genesis 6, the master is sick of everything in the universe. Wickedness is the new wave. And God wants to do a hard reset, so he summons Noah to tell him to build the ark. He tells him, don't just build the ark. Here it is, build an ark that can endure elements. Then he said, watch this, uh, what it is that we have misconstrued in Sunday school and vacation Bible school. I read the text so you could hear it in Genesis 6, 19 and 20. God never told Noah, go get the animals. He never said, go get the animals two by two. That is not what he said. He said, I hope some of y'all will catch it, the animals are coming to you. Hallelujah. I, I, I need somebody to just pull that thing in. It's coming to me. Uh, that is the kind of authority you have just been anointed with. I'm waiting on new birth to show up. I said that is the kind of authority that God has just deputized you with. I'm waiting on my praises so I can hear your voice. God said this year, you ain't got to chase it. You ain't got to stalk it. You ain't got to hunt it. You ain't got to keep texting it. You ain't got to follow up with it. God said it's coming to you. Everything you've been praying for is getting ready to come to you. Pastor, how is it coming? It's coming pressed down. It's coming shaking together. It's is coming running over everything you need it's, uh, it's coming to you I want you to lift up your hand I want to speak something over your life softly musicians please help me I got to speak this over your life and maybe it's not for you, maybe it's for the people on your online. But God put in my spirit this week to announce to those of you with lifted hands that this is the chapter of your life. That God will send the kind of man or the kind of woman who will do what the last one didn't. Oh God, I can't hear nobody in here. Adam couldn't even take authority over snakes, but God could trust Noah with the whole zoo. See, some of you have given too much authority to folk that can't even handle the snake. God help me, but God said when the next one comes, they will be able to handle all of what God has given to you to have in the earth. Be seated, please. The man God sends next. The woman God sends next. Will do what the last one couldn't do or wouldn't do. I better say it for the people in the back. Who God sends next, you will know they are from God because they will do what the last one couldn't do or wouldn't do. God, help me. The one who comes next will not have to be reminded. The one who comes next will not need a tutorial on how you should be treated. The one who comes next will take the responsibility off of you so you won't have to lead all the time. 
the one who comes next will know what they are supposed to do so you don't have the responsibility of raising a grown up that ain't your child. The one that comes next will offer help without you having to ask. The one that comes next will make sure that you got something to eat. The one that comes next will take care of your children as if they are their own. The one that comes next will not feel uncomfortable with your relationship with your mama. The one that comes next will not be insecure. The one that comes next will not treat you as an inconvenience or as an afterthought. The one that comes next will have no problem with your prayer life and with your commitment to God. The one that comes next will not have an issue asking questions about what they don't understand. The one that comes next will affirm what you do better than them and will not be confused about appropriated gender roles. The one that comes next will understand that you are not like anybody they ever encountered in their life. So they are the guarded with their life. The one that comes next will not wait till they lose you to figure out how they ought to love you. The one that comes next will understand that you are a sent from God. That there's only one of you that is born every day. 2,000 year. The one that comes next will pray for you while you sleep. The one that comes next will not be able to eat if you are unhappy. The one that comes next you'll have to stop them from coming to the job when they hear what they did to you. The one that comes next will not be able to be intimidated by the assignment on your life. What one man won't do, God will find a replacement. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Holy God. <laughs> Thank you, Holy God. I feel something getting ready to break right here. This is for those of you that survived a divorce. Those of you that have been dealing with loneliness. Those of you that have been flirting about going back. God told me to tell you, stop where you are. Better is coming. What I got for you is going to make all the other stuff look like peanuts. Whatever they wouldn't do. You don't, you don't have to watch an old episode of Sanford and Son to know that one person's trash is another person's treasure. Atlanta, the flaw with that logic is that we fail to see that most times they were never qualified to do the appraisal. I need somebody online to type this so it'll just stay in the thread. Type this, I need somebody to have it. God told me to tell you, good people never lose value. I don't know who that was for in this room, but I gotta give it to you again. Good people never lose value. Yeah. You never lose value. Even though you gained weight, you still got value went through a divorce or two, still got value. Filed bankruptcy, still got value. Got poor credit, still got value. You are a convicted felon, still got value. Never finished college, still got value. Came out of a dysfunctional family, still got value. Got a shady past, still got value. Got a sordid sexual history, but still got value. God needed you to know in this moment, do not let other people reevaluate you. There is today 
There is today an all-time high. I need you to hear this. There is today an all-time high. Here's your shout for used Rolexes. Y'all don't know what I'm saying. There's a value and a demand for used Rolexes. Here's where y'all got to shout. It used to be on somebody else's wrists, but somebody still wants it. You, you ought to be thankful under God. I can't hear nobody in here unless you've been in a coma. How you think you're going to marry somebody grown who ain't never been with nobody? Top selling timepiece in the marketplace is a Rolex that used to belong to somebody else. What you gonna do when God sends you what another man wouldn't do? God help me. Hi, y'all. Y'all got to forgive me. I'm talking to the first two rows. The first two rows been in church a long time. Let, let me talk to the last five rows. It, it, it ain't in the Bible. This is what Joe said. I, I want to do all the things your man wouldn't do. Yeah. I'll take you out on a night cruise on a yacht. Come on, y'all ain't been saved that long. That, 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 that God is going to connect you to somebody who is going to overturn what happened in your past so that you can finally feel free. Here it is to be vulnerable. You could let yourself loose on somebody who you saw the red flags for. You couldn't completely allow yourself to be available for somebody who you knew was conditional. Now God said, my job is to send you a Noah. Here it is, because Adam never built anything. God, I can't hear nobody. <laughs> You don't need nobody in your life who ain't working on something. Adam never built nothing but Noah. What one man can't do, what one job couldn't do, what one career couldn't do, what one college couldn't do, God will find another one to do it. And that is what he's working on for you in the month of May. He is working on your replacement. I should really be able to drop the mic right there. He is working on your replacement. Don't cry over spilt milk when you're lactose intolerant. That ain't even who you're supposed to be with. That ain't even where you're supposed to be. And God knows how to send a replacement when the designated person drops the ball. Adam couldn't do it because he liked apple pie. Moses couldn't do it because he had anger management issues. Sarah couldn't do it because she laughed. Jacob couldn't do it because he was allergic to the truth. Joseph couldn't do it because he thought it was all a dream. David couldn't do it because he didn't know how to keep it in his pants. Saul couldn't do it because he had a jealous streak inside of him. Noah couldn't do it because we had to send him to rehab. Saul couldn't do it because he was jealous of who he was supposed to be mentoring. Jonah couldn't do it because his GPS broke down. Miriam couldn't do it because she had a brown paper bag complex. 
Jeremiah couldn't do it because he wrestled with depression. Elijah couldn't do it because he felt burnt out. Samson couldn't do it because he was too busy on Tinder. Paul couldn't do it because he was walking around with an unregistered license. Thomas couldn't do it because he doubted even though he had evidence. Judas couldn't do it because he was in it for the money. Timothy couldn't do it because he had ulcers. Peter couldn't do it because God was afraid he would fight back. Martha couldn't do it because she was battling with anxiety. The rich young ruler couldn't do it because he was too busy trying to buy Twitter. Jamal Harrison Bryant couldn't do it because if he was scared of needles, what he gonna do with nails? So he said, the only one I can think to do it is my own son, Jesus Christ. And so they hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head and then he died. Can I tell you, that's not how the story ends. Three days later, he did it. He did it. He did it. And if he did it before, he'll do it again. Look at your neighbor. Tell him the replacement is coming. What you need, where you need it, and who you need it from. God will send the replacement. I want to pray for you. Lift up your hands. I want to pray for you. I pray, hear me with intentionality. I pray that God will bless you in the area you've had your greatest heartbreak. I pray that the new job, the new house, the new opportunity will delete the memories of the old person. I pray over every lifted hand that God give you the authority to command your day, to direct your feelings, and to speak into existence what it is that you need for your heart to feel safe. Speak of every lifted hand that God won't send you anybody who's too lazy to build something. I pray that God will give you the authority that until you find the replacement, you'll have the gumption to build for yourself. Those of you who are in this room, you survived. I need you to hear me. This ain't for your neighbor. You survived something that pulled your heart out of your chest and it's still beating. Would you give God thanksgiving? My time is so far over, it's, my time is spent. I, I done threw the whole clock away. And, um, but y'all ain't been to church in two years, it's all right. Um, I need to open this altar very quickly, please. I need to open this altar very quickly for those of you whose heart is fragile. For those of you whose heart is uh, on life support. I don't know where it is that you are. I don't know what it is that you've endured. I don't know what entanglement you had to get out of. But I need you to come, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
It's almost like Edgar Allan Poe. You can hear your own heartbeat inside your chest. I know I'm supposed to be out of here. Church should have been over 10 minutes ago. I'm so sorry, but I, I can't leave with you being crippled. You'll leave it there. Leave it. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't leave with you still not sleeping good. All that authority, what you look like stalking their page. All that authority. Would it matter to you who they with? God got a replacement. I need you to pull in just a little bit as people come in behind you. I got a traffic jam on I-20. Come on. Help me. I said all the things um, your man wouldn't do, but that, that can be inserted for anything that is uh, connected to matters of the heart. You still heard about the church. Your experience there. You're in pain. Here it is about the friendship and how it went south. I, I, I know next week all of us are going to be in pastel colors and giving out flowers and going to brunch, but everybody's experience with their mom ain't healthy. <laughs> let's, let's play pretend next week. <laughs> But that those who are at this altar that can't have a conversation for 20 minutes without it going somewhere else. There are those who are at this altar, those who are online, that still can't figure out why your grandmother had to raise you when your mom was healthy. God, I can't hear no real people right in here. Can't, can't figure out why they resent you when you never asked to be here. I want to pray that God will, um, will safeguard your heart. Only about five people know what it's like when you got the unfair responsibility to have to parent your parent. How am I coaching who's supposed to be mentoring me? Those of you who are online, I'm talking to you right now. This ain't for your neighbor. I need you to please um, lay your hands on your heart. Because you didn't even realize what you needed was a heart transplant. David said, create in me a clean heart. Oh God, renew a right spirit within me. Here's what's crazy. You keep saying you over it, but you won't date again. Keep saying you passed all of that. I don't care. But you swore to God and anybody who will listen. I ain't never going to let nobody get that close. I want to pray for you. I want you to press that hand into your heart till you can hear it beat. Jonathan, I prayed for you. You prayed for me. I love you. I need you to survive. is on your chest but I need you to know what is happening in this moment is you ain't turned to your neighbor you are saying this to you I need me I need me to survive watch this I ain't gonna say stuff to myself that's gonna injure me I refuse to be my own toxic relationship 
Come on, lay hands on your chest till you feel your own heartbeat. Come on, let's sing it together. Come on, everybody, raise it. I pray for you. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you too. Pray for me. Lord, I pray for every person at this altar, for every person online. That this week they'll fall in love with themselves. That this week they will reappraise their own value. That this week that they will stop putting themselves on sale and discounting their mistakes, not even realizing that that was the deposit that made them great. Thank you, dear Lord, for giving us the seed of knowledge to know you have in mind something and somebody greater. Thank you, dear Lord, that whatever comes next must be better than what was last. I better say that again. Whatever comes next has got to be better than what was last. And those of you, you believe that with every fiber of your being. Would you do me a favor? Would you just, we ain't done it in two years. Would you just embrace two people around you and just tell them you deserve something better. You deserve. You deserve something better. I won't. Everybody is standing. I'm going to open the doors of the church. Isn't it crazy that um, what Jesus asked for? Have you ever thought about what he asked for? He asked for you, give me your heart. Very softly. An old preacher once told me years ago, if you gave Jesus your heart and you got hot heart broken, then you took your heart out of the hands of God and you put it in the hands of somebody who couldn't handle it. Today, I want you to give Jesus your heart. Here it is. Or what's left of it. I want you to give him your heart, saying, God, I choose you. I love you. I want to be connected to you. Wherever it is that you are in this room, can I say this to you? The void of any emotionalism, I want to speak straight to your heart that I need you to get saved before you get bitter. I need you to get saved before you become vengeful. I need you to get saved before you have a life full of regret. I don't want you to just get saved. I want you to join this church. And I'm believing that you're going to do it right now on this Sunday morning. Where do broken hearts go? They better get to new birth. I'm believing God for 40 of you to come this morning. I'm believing God for 40 of you to come from all over this sanctuary. I need you to come. 
Your life is on the line. Your heart is at stake. New birth, come on, would you clap your hands as they come? Come on, clap your hands. Sometimes your heart wasn't broken by somebody you dated, somebody you married. Your heart was broken by somebody who raised you. Come on, I need you to come quickly. Please, I need you to come. Having a broken heart convolutes what you feel about people, how you interact with people, how you engage with people. That's why you love virtual church. You ain't got to ever turn to your neighbor. You just, I mean, that thing was the jam. That was it. It was just me in pajamas. I, I, I need you. Please help me because I'm, I'm, I'm still absent of another 20 that need to be at this altar. And they need to come even in this moment. Wherever it is that you are, even those of you who are online, join newbirth.org. Give God some praise for this young man that's coming. Bless his name. All right, let's go to work. I done done all that I know how to do. I've been up since 4 o'clock this morning. I'm now giving the baton to y'all. Come on, give God some praise. I need you to do me a favor. Would you do a row check for me real quick? Make sure every person on your row is saved. Make sure every person on your row has a church home. Make sure every person in your row has given their life over to God. Come on, give God some praise. Here they come. Bless his name. God is a God that cannot lie. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. I'm almost where I need to go. Do me a favor so that we can get out of here. Would you just find somebody around you that got something, something blue on? They got something blue on. Uh, ask them for me. Are they saved? Ask them, do they have a church home? Amen. They got something blue on. I need you to talk to them. Ask them, do they have a church home? Ask them, have they given their life to God? Come on, give God some praise. Come on, here they come. Are you going to give God glory? Come on, for this beautiful couple, I need y'all to give God glory. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Stretch your right hand to faith. Stretch your right hand to faith. Amen. Pastor, why'd you make us talk to somebody with blue on? Old school saints know you wear black on communion Sunday. They ain't been to church in a long time. Amen. Here comes somebody else. Give God some praise. Here comes somebody else. Stretch your right hand to faith. Repeat after me. You're in the right place at the right time. Joining the right church. Serving only God. And I know that's right. If you know I'm right, say show you're right. Bless the Lord. I ask that you'll please follow our uh, leaders out this way. New birth, make some noise real quick. Come on, those of you at the altar, I need you to come this way. Leaders, are y'all helping me? Come on, come on. Thank you so very much. You may be seated. Y'all, please don't talk about me bad for keeping y'all in church long today. I'm going to do better next week. I promise you I'm going to do better. Uh, oh, they went to go get their stuff. Thank you. Amen. I'm going to challenge every person, every person. Uh, how many of you know you can trust God with your heart? How many of you know you can trust God with your heart? I'm going to challenge every person to sow a seed of $42. Ask our uh, media ministry if you'll put uh, giving up on the, on the uh, screen now. $42. Any person that's ever been ghosted, everybody ever been ditched, everybody's still waiting on a phone call, anybody who survived a divorce, amen. Whoever it is that you've been through, you've been through a heartbreak, but you survived it. It hurt for a while. 
Uh, but I'm telling you, God has been uh, uh, faithful even when we have not. I want you to sow that seed. Those of you who are online, I want to challenge you uh, in uh, so doing. This coming Tuesday night, uh, I want you to join me and Dr. Tamer. Uh, we're going to be doing group therapy for all of us uh, as we move forward in the things of God. Uh, let me ask if I got uh, any uh, ladies of Delta Sigma Theta, would you stand? All the ladies of Delta Sigma Theta, would you please stand? Come on, give God some praise, ladies of Delta Sigma Theta, Sorority Incorporated. Uh, the ladies of Delta Sigma Theta are having their diasporic festival at uh, the New Black Wall Street Market today from 12 until 4. And so they are inviting all of you to come hang out with them uh, at New Black Wall Street Market. Give God a hand clap of praise uh, for these amazing ladies of Delta Sigma Theta, Sorority Incorporated. My sister... Uh, is a Delta. My grandmother uh, was a Delta, so I, I honor uh, all of you. Would you stand to your feet? Stand to your feet. Amen. As we leave this place, but never from God's presence, repeat after me, walk with God, and he'll walk with me. Talk with God, and he'll talk with me. Listen to God, and he'll listen to me. Build for God, and he'll build for me. Love God because he first loved me. I want to say something to you. Next Sunday is Mother's Day, but I need you to hear my heart, hear my intention. Even if your mother has gone on to be with the Lord, I still want you to come to church. You are not going to be depressed on next Sunday. Amen. You are not going to be sad on next Sunday. I want you to come in church and rejoice that God gave you a God-fearing mother. I rejoice for the time that you did have. Amen. Do me a favor. If your mother has already gone on to be with the Lord, would you give God some praise for her even now? Bless his name. Lift your hand right where it is that you are. If nobody told you this week, I need you to know at the very least your pastor loves you. Lift that hand as high as you see yourself going. Now I want to him who is absolutely able to do anything but fail. May God make you sleepless until you help somebody. May God make you restless until you help yourself. May God irritate you until you have enough sense to worship him. And may God bless you until you have to give stuff away. Henceforth, now and forevermore, and the blessed people of God said, amen. God bless you. Have an incredible day in the Lord. I'm looking to see all of you on Tuesday night.